Hi, and welcome to another episode of Short and Sweet TV. In this episode, we'll be looking at InDesign and how you can create this speech bubble that I've got here. As you can see, the great thing about this speech bubble is that when I click on my little arrow here, my little triangle, I can move that around and it creates that seamless join between the speech bubble and the triangle, so it is adjustable. So to start off, what we're going to do is grab the ellipse tool to create the bubble itself. So we'll come across and choose the ellipse tool from the toolbar over here. And then coming over to my swatches panel, I want to make sure that I've got the correct fill and stroke selected. So before I do that, I'm just going to make sure nothing is selected on the page. So if I hold down shift and command or shift control on PC and A, that deselects everything on the page. That's a really handy shortcut if you want to make sure that you don't have any objects selected before you start playing around with any of your settings. So I've got my swatches panel here, I've got a paper fill set, and then if I click on the stroke, you can see there that I've got a black outline, which is what I want. And then I'm going to come across to this text and I'm going to start drawing this bubble over the top of it. Now, as I click and drag out from the center of this text, I'm going to hold down the option key on Mac or Alt on PC, and I'm able to draw from the center of the text out, and then that looks about right. Come across now to my stroke panel, and I want to change the width of that black line around the ellipse. I'll bring that up to four points. And I'm also going to change where the stroke aligns. You can see, see here in the stroke panel where I've got a line stroke. At the moment, by default, it sits um, right in the middle of the path, so to the center of the path, but I actually want to align this to the outside of my path. So I'm going to click on that third one there, which just runs that stroke around the outside of the shape. And the next step is just to copy this ellipse. So I'm going to use Command C or Control C on PC, and I'm going to place or paste a copy directly on top of the shape. And I can do that if you come up to Edit and then down to Paste in Place, it pastes that copy directly on top of the object you copied. All right, so with that object still selected, if I come across to the swatches panel, I'm gonna make sure that this object that's now sitting above has no stroke running around the outside. So I'm gonna click none for the stroke. And yes, you can see the fill is still set to paper. Perfect, and now the last step is just to create that little triangle coming out here. So I'm gonna come across, grab my pen tool, and then make sure I've got nothing selected once again on the page. So shift command A to deselect or shift control A on PC and coming down and I'm just going to click once inside of the speech bubble coming outside here, clicking one more time again and then inside the speech bubble again. So I've got those three points there and I just need to make that width of that stroke match my speech bubble. So I'll come across to the stroke panel, increase that to four points. Excellent, almost there. The last thing is just to push this triangle behind that white fill that I created before, but not all the way to the back behind the original ellipse. So it's gonna sit between the two. And the way I get it to sit between the two is if I grab my selection tool now, I'm gonna come across and then I can right click on the object or control click on Mac and come down to my arrange and then I'm going to send backward rather than send it to back. So sending it backward just pushes it back one step behind that white fill. So as you can see now, I can move that triangle around there and um, yeah, it's adjustable and it creates that seamless line. So I'll now group this little triangle with the ellipse and also the ellipse sitting behind. So that black frame and I'll group them. So Command G or some Control G on PC. And then the final step is just to send that now behind the text. So I can right click on that, go down to arrange and send it to back to push it behind the text. And I've now got my speech bubble in place. So hopefully you found this useful and you can get started creating your own speech bubbles. And I look forward to seeing you in the next short and sweet InDesign Tips video tutorial. Thanks for watching.